Hey Top Gun! In my previous videos I talked mostly about how to launch an IT company, what are the procedures that you need to go through in order to launch your IT custom software development company, what are the documents that you need in order to launch it and overall how much it costs to launch a custom software development company or an outsourcing company. If you have missed those episodes make sure to check out that playlist uh, and check the videos one by one because I outline all the different aspects of starting and launching your IT company. And in today's video I want to talk about something slightly different and that is how much it costs to run a software development company on a day-to-day -day basis. And a side note here is that we are talking about remote IT companies because if we speak about offline IT companies, then we should include a lot of other expenses like uh, office supplies, like office space and so on and so forth. So all the legal arrangements of those office spaces. Today we're talking about how much it costs to run on a day-to-day -day basis a remote IT company. Let's go! Before we move straight into the video, Make sure to subscribe to the waitlist to IT People community, the link is in the description, so that you will be notified when we are launched. And in that community we will be sharing all the legal documents that you might use, the templates of, the, of those legal documents, the action plans that you might take in order to launch and grow your IT company, coaching sessions with the IT experts on different aspects for both IT service and IT product companies and so on. So make sure to subscribe below, no obligations. And the first expense that I consider and that we took as a company is buying a domain name for our website. And actually we did that, I did that on my own a couple of years before I actually launched my company. It was like visualization of my dream and I bought a domain name and my husband helped me to build our first corporate website, which is still today because it works, so I don't see any need in investing into making it um, better and improving it. So um, that is the same, the very same website that we built several years ago before my company has actually started. So that is a domain name and it costs us about $15 per year, a uh, little bit less, 14 and 56, something like that. So about $15 per year. That is an expense that I can take. So the another expense that we have to do on a day-to-day -day basis is hosting and that is hosting a website. I forgot to hosting website because it's important hosting a corporate website and it costs us uh, five dollars per month on a digital ocean so uh, you might use all sorts of other hosting services uh, you just look where uh, it works for you again where the servers are being based and whether it's reliable and how cost effective it is so but in general it costs about five dollars per month in general to host your website Another expense that we took further along the way is buying our own virtual servers and we bought them on Amazon. Now it costs us about $25 per month because we already have free servers on Amazon. If I'm not mistaken, I need to check, out, check with my system administrator, but we have about free servers on Amazon and we pay about $25 per month. But that expense uh, we took um, a couple of years after uh, starting a company because we understood that we need test servers that, uh, and actually we have a lot of pet projects and a lot of products that we're trying to launch uh, when we uh, have time like on a, it is a side hustle of my company that we're trying to launch our own product so we need service and uh, of, of course there is another need where you will need your own server and that is when for example you do some sort of a job for your customer and your customer does not have a server his own corporate server where you can you know set up a database for him for example for them and uh, that's where you have to use your server and you just include the cost of that server in the bill for your customer. So that is about $25 per month, but it might differ. You might buy only one server and it will cost you about five or $6 per month, but we have free, so it's $25 per month. So the next expense that we have to make on a 
now on a monthly basis it's sales tools and by sales tools uh, tools uh, honestly i only imply uh, buying uh, connects on upwork it's uh, something we have started to do recently because previously we didn't use upwork as a primary um, sales source and previously i only used linkedin uh, and some other resources but those uh, are free like seeing there is a premium account but i used a free account so uh the sales tools uh, the cost <laughs> the cost for the sales tools differs from somewhere from 40 dollars and up to 100 dollars per month again this is not something that we pay monthly because sometimes i feel like i don't have time to do any sales myself and we currently don't have a separate sales person in our company we're considering to hire some maybe closer to the winter i don't know but as of yet when i feel like i don't have the time to do the sales this month i simply cancel my premium subscriptions and that's it and sometimes we might go without these sales tools for like half a year because i have my list of prospects i have my list of leads and i can actually work with them i can pick them while we work with our customers and not buy any tools if i just don't feel like it and or just don't have time but if i do so it's uh, for example now we're currently actively looking for clients and that's where when we invest into sales and that is about 40 to 100 dollars where does the 40 come from it's actually the upwork cost uh, upwork takes uh, about so 24 dollars for a premium account on Upwork and plus we buy connects and we typically buy them uh, well as much as we can so it's about $15 for the connects it's a little bit less 39 okay but something like that so $39 to $100 per month on sales only so the next is the next expense that we have to take on a monthly basis is bank fees. Bank fees, I, I don't uh, indicate them because, not because I want to uh, hide something from you, but because they actually differ and during some months we don't have any bank fees to pay, except for when we pay for our service domain and hosting because we typically operate with um, our uh, employees and contractors uh, within the system where we, we don't pay bank fees, but sometimes we do and bank fees may go up to you know up to $1,000 it depends on how many uh, contractors you have and what um, service services you pay for so it really depends on your particular situation for the very same reason I don't indicate uh, the cost of vacations and benefits within the company because you might not even have these expenses when you're just starting out and, or when you're operating the first couple of years uh, as a company uh, because you simply might operate with your employees uh, on a contractor agreement or an independent contractor agreements and pay only hourly or project-based or a part-time and you might only provide the benefits that you feel like paying for example online English courses or, or anything like that but again that's very custom and I, I won't indicate them right now because uh, we have different agreements with different employees and it's hard for me to calculate how much it costs and the same relates to the taxes and um, in terms of taxes again I don't indicate the amount because for for each situation, for each company, it might differ. If you have not um, reached the maximum of your revenue as an LLC, for example, you only pay the uh, standard basic uh, fee for running your company. And in our case, it actually I can actually indicate it because uh, we haven't reached our maximum, we haven't uh, derived our profits, so uh, we only paid uh, the basics and that is less than five hundred dollars per year so last year it costed us less than five hundred dollars per year just because we haven't um, surpassed the profit limit that there is according to estonian laws
but in your case, of course, it will differ. And if you have a company registered in the United States, then the uh, taxes there will be up to 50% 50, 50 and uh, that you will have to pay if you are using your profits. But if you don't use the profits, then you don't pay for it. So again, it's it's very customized situation. So it's our case last year, but this year we will pay more because our profits increased. And apparently in my country, they changed the law. So now I have to pay both in that country in, and in my own country. So it's extremely complicated situation. This is how much it costs to run a company, a remote, let me stress it again, a remote IT service company. So let's calculate now how much it costs me overall in a year to run a remote IT company. So I calculated all of this in a year. So 15 plus 60 plus 300 plus 600. I, I took a very average amount here because again, it's very hard to calculate the exact cost, but you may come to zero if you use your own circle of uh, prospects, if you have your own network of prospects, so it might come to zero to you. And uh, I count in taxes. I don't count bank fees and vacations and benefits that you provide for your employees because it's very customized situation. So you will have an understanding of all the rest and then you will um, add some more according to your situation. So 15 plus uh, so 75, 375, 975. So 975, so it's 1470 per year and of course if the medium uh, invoice is like five thousand dollars that is something that you can definitely manage because that is your expense in a year as a remote software development company of course again I don't count in bank fees vacations and the taxes will be way way higher depending on your country if you live for example in the United States and if you use your profits we don't we save everything and we invest everything into our growth. So that's why the taxes are so low for us. So this much how it costs me to run a remote software development company uh, from home. So uh, your situation might be different and it definitely will be different depending on the taxes that you have to pay and on the country you live in and on the country you have registered your company in. But this is how it is for me. And as you can see, it's nothing that you cannot manage. If you still haven't subscribed for the IT people community where I will share more tips and tricks on how to run and how to launch your IT business and where you will find all sorts of coaching sessions. So we're planning to have, to have all of that done. Subscribe to the waitlist and yes, give me a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe if you still haven't and check out that playlist on uh, how to launch and how to uh, grow your IT company from home and I will see you next Wednesday. Have a great week, have a great mood and see you next week. Bye!